Friday in Tryon, North Carolina, and it's a rainy day today. We had a light rain this morning, a very heavy rain at noontime, and uh, now it's just a light rain again, but we really needed the rain. It had two weeks of drought up here, and uh, it's good because we planted our vegetable garden, and uh, the tomatoes and the peppers all needed the rain. <laughs> Uh, so, when you turn on the TV, and so many of the preachers on TV are saying, give your heart to Jesus, you'll never have any trouble. Give your heart to God and you'll have financial wonders. Your business will prosper, your family will grow. You'll never have any sickness or problems, just have enough faith. You know, they must have a different Bible than I have because that's not what my Bible says. As a matter of fact, my Bible indicates that we may be living in the last days. My Bible indicates that we better start thinking about what the entire Bible says and not just the good parts. You see, my Bible says in Acts 17 that we need to repent because God has fixed a day when he'll judge the world. And it will be judged by a man that he appointed and proved that he has the right to judge because he raised him from the dead. There's only one person that's been raised from the dead, and that's Jesus. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 23, it says, I am he who searches minds and hearts, and each one will be rewarded according to his deeds. Searches not only what can be seen and heard by people, but he looks at our minds and our hearts. Matthew 16, 27 says, the son of man is coming to recompense every man according to his deeds. Second Corinthians 5, 10 says, uh, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ and be judged according to our deeds. Matthew 3, verses seven and eight says, bring forth fruit that's appropriate for a repentance. Now, if you look at the Gospel of Matthew, when it deals with the end times, and we talked about earthquakes the other day and how they're occurring more frequently and more severely than any time in history, in chapter 24, it deals with the end times. Chapter 25 and 24 both, talk about his coming again. In chapter 25, it warns us that we need to be ready for his coming, and it gives two parables, a parable of the ten virgins, some that had adequate oil and some that didn't, a parable of the ones that were left with talents, those that were rewarded for using those talents properly and increasing, and those that didn't. But I want you to hear the words of Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all of his angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. Now listen carefully. And all of the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right side and the goats on his left. The king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now drop down to verse 41. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, cursed ones, into eternal flames or fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. Drop down to verse 46. There will go away, they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. How do you become righteous? Well, righteousness only comes through Christ. There's no other way to become righteous. And you'll be separated like sheep from goats, depending on whether or not you have Christ in you, you in Christ, the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. I've come to a place where you've repented of your sins and the best you can lived the way Christ would want you to live. 
You see, righteousness only comes through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible is filled with warnings about a judgment, a final judgment, a judgment of separation. And the two places are drastically different. One is described as a place of darkness and suffering, turmoil, punishment, gnashing of teeth, anguish. The other place is described as a place that's so wonderful we'll not even compare it with this earth. So wonderful that we'll never even think about this earth. So wonderful that we'll just have the peace and the way that we've always wanted life to be. We get to choose. We can accept God's plan, which was to send his son to die for our sins, so that if we would receive him, we'd have eternal life, or to reject him. It's our choice. You see, peace and prosperity are not promised to all people forever. A judgment is promised to people, and it's an eternal judgment. Which did you choose? It's not too late. As long as you have breath, you can still choose Jesus as your Savior. It's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day. Testing one, two, three, four. This is a test to see if I can add this clip to this video. One, two, three, four.